Welcome back. No side plots today, so it would seem. It's slightly sunny outside, and I've been in the dark most of this afternoon because I've been watching today's review, Phantasm. It's a glorious, glorious little low-budget film that, I might add that this is the original poster work, still looks pretty freaky, and it also has shiny shiny on it now. But I digress. It is a low budget film. Extremely low budget. But it's also one of the best horror movies I've ever seen. And that's saying something. As a matter of fact, being that it's October, I do have a special I want to get done this month. So be looking for that towards Halloween. But in the meantime, more reviews! I have at least two of them planned so far for the beginning of this month. The first one, of course, being Phantasm. Phantasm's plot is a little hard to explain, it, mostly because it's a lot of running around, and also because it's very vague and mysterious. Even the film itself kind of leaves you going, okay, what's going on here? But I'll try to summarize it as best as I can. Our story starts off with Mike, who is following his brother out to see the funeral of one of his brother's friends. While there, Michael witnesses a couple of odd little occurrences. First of all, he notices that there's a couple of little road things running about that he couldn't quite see, but he also very evidently heard the noises of, and while hearing these noises, his motorbike was also malfunctioning. And a few moments later, till after the funeral, Mike is still hanging around watching things when he sees the first appearance of the tall man, played by Angus Scrim. A man who had worked with the director about one or two movies ago. And this is actually the director's third film and his first horror film. And of course, the first freaky thing about uh, Mr. Agnes as the tall man is that he picks up a casket with a dead body in it, weighing about 500 pounds roughly, and tosses it into the back of a hearse without any help, and with very little strain it would seem. After this, Mike is continuing to ask what's going on, both to a woman who apparently is supposed to be a psychic, as well as a, keeping an eye on his brother because he's afraid that his brother's going to abandon him. But as things go along, the movie starts to get more eerie as Michael's brother picks up a woman in velvet, as she is proclaimed in the titles, at which we also saw earlier is actually the tall man in disguise luring people out one by one to become his new victims so he can do something else to them after their death. But it does not stop there. While Mike is watching the female tall man and his brother start starting to get it on, one of the hooded dwarves once again appears. This time a little more out in the open, giving Michael a silhouette to go by with this, but still not sure what on earth he just saw. But not wanting to crowd this omission of how the movie's plot, I'll be skipping a few details yet to this, but in short, Michael figures out there's something going on out in that cemetery. He even goes to investigate himself, only to be attacked by a silver orb, one of the caretaker, tall man's caretaker's helpers, 
and to have see both of them accidentally collide, killing the man, and then running away from the tall man himself in a quick chase through the funeral home. Uh, escaping the funeral home, he collects a finger to show to his brother, which can finally convinces him that something very strange is going on out there. A few other okay. things, and their mutual oh, friend Ricky gets involved. Rich. He did. But the basis oh, that is, is that eventually they all end up out at the funeral home. But in short, yeah. it seems that the oh, evil dwarves the are actually the death. cadavers left of friends and family. Girls. And anyone else that the tall man has been able to collect from the local area. And before. that he is using them as slave labor as well as no. his own little Dice minions come out along with the silver orbs. And then we get a lot of weird back and forth here. Where you're not kind of sure what to believe and what not to believe. And essentially, it looks like almost everyone's passing away while Mike and his brother are trying to figure out one last way to try and trick the tall man into possibly falling into a mine that goes down for miles. To which they do succeed in this, but we are given a bit of a cliffhanger. So, you must be asking yourselves, well, you, of course, you skimped on the plot, so what all happened? That is for you to find out. And you alone. This movie deserves a watch. This is a great, and I repeat, great horror movie. It still has scares. Okay, okay, enough of that. And they still work, believe me on that. But it also has a very thin yet very strong plot. It's hard to describe. Essentially, the director himself is making the movie confusing to you because it is confusing to the characters themselves. You're not exactly sure what all is going on and what to all you should be believing because it's apparently the tall man is messing with Mike in the entire film. And that's the basis of most of the plot, is that Mike, the tall man is screwing with Mike, and Mike has to figure out what is real, what isn't, and has to face his fears and not let them take him by surprise. When he does not let his fear take him over, that is when he's actually able to accomplish things. The... Cinematography in this is beautiful, gorgeous, for such a low-budgeted film. I mean low, this director was never on really officially on the radar. He did a few little films that people still remember here and there, mostly the entire Phantasm franchise. But he's done a few more before that, and I think he's still doing a couple in between here and there. And he still, I repeat, still wishes to continue the Phantasm franchise and hopefully make it better again. If only Hollywood would stop screwing with he, And he still, and I repeat, still wants to do another Phantasm movie, only so long as Hollywood doesn't screw with him like he has been a, lot, a few times in his sequels. Especially number two from what I hear. And they had, the Hollywood had a little too much say in that one, and... Eh. But the art that this director paints with his camera is gorgeous. From your common day, everyday block of road that people are just living on, to creepy little houses and gothic style funeral homes where evil seems to have taken root in some form, it is just a wide berth of all kinds of strange yet interesting places for you to see and it's a marvel to see that much detail in such a low low budget beyond that it's an extremely
extremely good movie, very well put together. The only problem I would say some people would have is the very end. Because, let's face it, the cliffhanger is just kind of rough on anybody. But I will say that at least he had somewhat of a plan to go by. Too bad Hollywood keeps trying to screw with his sequel plans. But to that, it's still a fairly, very good movie. You can still get this from Anchor Bay. I got this for... I'm not sure how much. I'm thinking I got this for about roughly 5 to 10 bucks at a half price book. So, outside of half-price books, I would say probably 10 to 20 bucks you can expect for this Anchor Bay release, which is very nice. Has a few extras. It has even a running commentary with the director and a couple of the other cast members. Very solid buy. I quite enjoyed it. I watched it on Netflix first before I actually did finally get my own copy of it. Because I wanted to make sure that what this what the, all the rumors were saying of it being a very good film were 100 percent true that's what i like to do just to make sure that my collection doesn't all turn out to be phil because of a certain prick in a green lab coat who screwed with my collection for about half a year but i digress but enough of that this has been your first halloween monster flick and go, rent, view it, buy it, whatever, and enjoy that which is known as Phantasm. And I shall be back next time with a vampire classic. And no, this is not Twilight. I'd rather commit a lobotomy than watch one of those films. Thanks.